Some people are misunderstanding master and disciple. Some, some people think it's master and slave. But the moment we bring the separation, it brings something which is very difficult to get rid of. Separation brings dependence. You understand? The moment you you get rid of something, you stop depending on it. Because you need to compare. So, of course, societies have been built and socially there is a big difference. There was a big difference in between the the man part and the human part and the women part, sorry. But deeply we have to put the question, what is the human part? Then this difference will not matter so much because the moment we we realize that human life is sacred. And all life is sacred, but the moment we realize human life is sacred, you cannot make a scale saying that one is more important than that one. Is, that becomes impossible. Maybe I, I answered it <laughs> Can we recognize our inner truth? How can we raise the discernment? How can we raise our discernment? Discernment. Awareness. How can we raise our discernment? How can we raise our discernment? Yes. Oh, okay. And how can we recognize the truth? The truth? So most of the time we say you cannot. <laughs> it's a dream. There is only, no truth, only truth can recognize you. It goes in the other way. That is uh, that is discernment. <laughs> Uh, I'm, not joking. I'm not laughing at you. Huh? Okay. Uh, to increase the discernment, once again, first thing is take care of each and every corner, every part of your life, but really caring, like, like a very loving mother who tries to care to hold the needs of her baby without sentimentality because this is a problem with mothers too much sentimentality so discovering my needs and giving them what what they need is already a big task it's already a big, big work, big job. And it has to be done minute after minute, all the time. Well, sometimes you don't need anything. Now, when many of our needs are completed, a quality appears. And that quality is discernment. What I mean by that is, what appears to be a clarity. So for responding to our needs, we also need clarity, but a little one. When, our, when many of our needs are completed, the quality of clarity is much important. And then, in this quality of clarity, I think it's only into this quality of clarity that we can realize that 
we cannot recognize what is truth. Only truth can recognize us, but we will never know what it is. Yesterday, we were talking with a, a lawyer here. And this is the big question, you know, of, of, of the law. What is true? What is the truth? So when you go into a case, court case, People try to look at the fact, whatever it is, crime or somebody was cheating someone else, or robbers. Or, we try to look at it from different, different points of view, to have a global view of the situation. So sometimes, for example, uh, when, I don't know how it is in Romania, but in France, uh, when a robber is caught, and he goes to court. The judge tries to see how about his life. And according to the globality of his life, he's going to give a different penalty. Either we'll put him into jail, we'll ask him to pay something, or to, to work, social work. But the, what they call the, the crime is the same. But according to the situation, the answer is not the same. So, of course, judges are human beings, and they are not the few ones I've met. They never pretend to know the truth. And they always say, it's very difficult to bring a clarity and to take a decision. Because it has to do with a person. Now, if that person is bringing a big mess in the society, now they, are, they have these laws, where they, they relate to laws and they say, well, according to that law, this is the penalty. Now, in, in what we call spirituality, we also have laws. They are called... Uh, Ethic, ethical. In the classical yoga, there are five personal ethical law to follow for oneself, and five ethical laws to follow regarding the others, the society. In the whole classical uh, yoga, there were ten of each. But there's, there was a reformer called Patanjali who took only five of, it, of, the, of these. So altogether there are ten laws, but before Patanjali there were twenty. And in the tantric uh, tradition there are hundreds. So what I mean is that if if you're very careful with the way you live and if you try to live ethically it brings a lot of order in in, in one's life, personal life. And that order gives a lot of freedom give much more freedom to look at those deep questions. But most of the time we come to that uh, answer that we cannot know what truth is. I can give you a more practical example, more precise. The two first ethical points in classical yoga are five altogether are ten but personal five personal five I don't know how you say transpersonal uh, so the two first are are called ahimsa and satya satya is truth and ahimsa is 
not hurt him. So they don't say that you have to choose in between. You have to live with both. That is, for example, regarding truth, it has there are four levels in truth. The one is the behavior, physical behavior, not to cheat with yourself. The second is speech speaking. We would simply say here not to lie, but when you when we make a deeper search into what we mean by lying, it becomes a, a, a world, a universe. It's, it's, it's <clears throat> for example, is when when you don't say the truth, are you lying? And if you say nothing, are you lying? You know, all, all that kind of questions. And they have to do with truth. Then there is this, the, the place of uh, intellectual truth, thinking, having a, 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 true, a true thinking. You, you see what, what that can mean? That, that once again, it's the whole world. And there is a false quality in truth, uh, which comes at the end that the only real possibility of truth is to be totally silent with the body, with the words, with the thought. So, now, there is the, the first one which is not hurting. Same thing, not hurting with your body, with your uh, speech, yeah? <clears throat> with your thought. Now, if you just try to link these two together, not hurting and being true all the time. It's a huge work. But this is where we have to start from. Not from the, the very the very difficult uh, thing, but from where we can. And starting from there, for example, Truly, not harming physically anything, anyone, every Monday. Just let's make it very simple. Just one day a week. Truly. Then, a sensation occurs within oneself. And until you love you fall in love with your Monday. It's difficult to pass the Tuesday. But when you fall in love with the sensation of the Monday, then you can you can do it on Tuesday too. And that's the way it works. Increasing uh, a quality of life. And this, this quality is bringing a lot of discrimination because it, you're questioning all the time. And you can come to such a point that the quality of discrimination, which, be careful, very often discrimination is bringing fragmentation. So there is a quality in discrimination which is no more discriminating. It is clarity. That is facing reality as it is and you have no other choice than living it. Which does not mean to accept, but to live it. And as far as I can say, into this clarity, only truth can understand me. But me cannot understand truth. <laughs> No, you cannot. Truth can experience you. I'm not playing with words. This is what I call the state of discipleship. 
not the disciple of somebody, but the quality of discipleship, that is to be deeply listening, staying open and with a very clear mind. Then sometimes we we are at this point that it becomes obvious that we are the children of life. So we contain life. Sorry? So we contain life. Let's see. We are life. Huh? We are. Uh, yeah. And there is no container and content. In fact, we could say that question is, can be so deep that sometimes the question disappears, but we never got any answer. The question is gone. And what is left, if we don't name it, we, we, there is a possibility of staying with that. But the moment we name it once again, we will bring the vision. It are supposed to send difficulty in science. Yes, time. <laughs> it's time for another question, anyway. <laughs> what, what would you say the differences between making a decision and